Hey guys, thanks for coming to my channel. So I just kinda want to do like a little video and just speak about like how things have been with me. I feel like I don't really share too much of myself. I've been like so caught up in doing videos, giving advice and like talking about cults and all that stuff and religion and all that stuff. Um, but I also really want to share certain parts of my life because that is also a part of my journey and some of you may be able to relate to certain things and some of you may not but either way you know like it's always nice to know that you can relate to something with somebody else and that you can see that like there is life after religion there is life after being in a cult and life is not always great we have our ups we have our downs we have our high points we have our low points for me things have been like really really wavy you know what i'm saying like up and down up and down um so the last video i had did i said my grandmother had passed away and that was uh march 7th so it's been almost two months now since she passed away that was very difficult i've been getting through it um i've been seeing things from a different perspective and it's been really helping me to see it as she is in a place where she's actually happy i had dreams about her i can sense her at times you know things like that so i just really look at it like that when it comes to losing someone that you really love like we're mostly sad because we miss them but they on the other hand i believe are really happy you know like they're in a place that we really can't comprehend and i do believe that there's definitely another place after this life i think that there's like a different life and it's not just like oh you're in heaven in the clouds and there's god and then he's judging and telling you you're going to hell or heaven i i don't believe in those things i and it's not because i don't want to believe in it it's because it's very hard for me to believe that with everything that I've experienced and the spiritual experiences I've had, which I have never shared with you guys, which I do uh, want to share with you guys, uh, maybe in the next video, I definitely see things very different when it comes to uh, passing away, when it comes to the afterlife, when it comes to when it comes to losing someone you love. Which I really don't like saying losing because we're really not losing them, right? We're really we had them in our life. And now they've moved on to their next journey and i believe we're all here for our own human experience and our own journey and then we move on to the next and we may meet them again i mean there have been many people who've died and came back and then said that they saw their loved one or they saw their best friend they saw their pet they saw their child who passed away you know so it's like how do you really explain that but um two nights ago i lost my my dog she uh not lost uh my dog she i had to put her down and that was so freaking hard it still is because it's so fresh it was only two nights ago uh her name is charlotte isabella we call her charlie charlizzy charlie angel um yeah so i have two dogs and she was nine she was a small dog she was a maltese mixed with bijan she was the most youthful, fun, loving dog. Everyone in my neighborhood loved her. She was super duper sweet. Like, I at one point even thought about making her into like some sort of like a therapy dog. You know, like take her to the hospital for people who are sick or, or things like that because I, I feel like she could really cure depression. Like she, whenever I would cry and get emotional, she would come and just lick my face. <laughs> so um, I really miss that. I miss, um, coming home even though i have my other sweet angel here my other dog but they were very opposite i miss seeing the youthfulness she brought a lot of life to our family she brought a lot of life and love uh and happiness to our family and to our home and it's been amazing six and a half years i've had her so charlie was adopted i adopted her in like was it like 2015 no the end of 2014 i adopted her and so i've had her since then and when i adopted her uh, she did have i was told that she had a heart murmur and that was it that's what i was told um she ended up actually having a under a underlying heart disease that i did not i did not realize she had i did not know and it like got worse over time she wasn't spayed because i was told that that wasn't they just they told me not to spade her because of the fact that like her heart murmur or whatever but that always kind of made me feel like that's weird and um i thought it was all right i thought it was all right 
so charlotte went into heat female dogs go into heat like once a year or every six months she only she went into heat like maybe once a year so she went into heat but then she wasn't really eating and at first we thought of it as like she's probably just not hungry you know maybe it's like maybe this heat cycle is like really rough for her but then she started losing weight to the point where you could feel her bones and she lost so much weight she became very weak very lethargic it took like three weeks that her health rapidly declined at one point it looked like she was getting better but she wasn't she wasn't eating at all like she was starving she'll only eat human food but then she'll only eat a little bit and she's a dog that eats like she eats so much for a dog so small she only weighed like probably eight pounds so so for such a tiny dog she really could eat so tuesday this week today is thursday so tuesday i went to work like regular day um the night before that i had like this feeling i saw her and i was just like she really doesn't look good she looks she was bleeding a lot and i was just like i gotta take her to the vet i'm gonna take her to the vet this week i end up taking her to the vet tuesday i come out of work and i'm like she we're like she has to go to the vet so we rush her to the vet and we take her to the hospital and um they run these tests right they're like we're gonna run tests we're gonna see what it is i had a feeling it has something to do with her uterus it was like this this um infection that dogs who are older because she was nine that if they're not spayed they can have an infection and it can cause this this sickness in them so uh the vet says well you know she's gonna have to get surgery it's gonna cost a lot of money i was just like all right i'm willing to do what i have to do to because she's only nine like she has more years small dogs can live a long time so she has more years i can cannot lose my dog i just my grandmother passed like i cannot go through this anymore you know for 2021 please let me have a decent 2021 because there was so many deaths in 2020 and i'm so thankful i didn't have any personal deaths in 2020 but it was just so much knowing and seeing and feeling like i pick up on a lot of emotions and i feel people's feelings so it was hard for me to go through 2020 even because it's such an energy shift so the vet is like we sit in the parking lot the vet is like i'll call you back after the results he calls us back and tells us that she is gonna uh definitely need the surgery but the problem is that her white and her red blood cell count was way too low and that she could die at any moment and so she would need surgery right then and there um but then the other issue was then they found certain things with her heart and that her heart might not even be strong enough to get her through surgery so we had to make a call within 10 minutes of whether i was going to put my dog down or pay a bunch of money for surgery that she might possibly not come out of and i did not want her to go under and then me not be able to even say goodbye if she was to not come out of it and then the other possibility was that she could come out of it but then pass away afterwards or pass away days later because her heart was just not strong strong enough that was probably one of the most difficult decisions i've and i've made many difficult decisions but this was definitely one of the most hardest decisions i've had to make in that quick a mat matter of time that was so freaking hard um i don't want every video i put out to seem so emotional but this is my life this is what i'm this is what goes on you know i am gonna share all the good stuff but i want to share whatever it is that's going on so you guys can know my journey and how these things are affecting me and how these things really do make you grow and make you stronger so i had to put my dog down and that was so freaking hard i cried like i bawled my eyes out. i was like heavy crying and i don't heavy cry like that often i was heavy crying i didn't care who saw me i was in a parking lot outside crying i didn't care who saw me crying i didn't care i didn't care about nothing i just wanted my dog i held her um i took pictures with her i got video with her i sang her little song that i <laughs> would always sing to her and it was very very freaking hard like when you have a, a pet they're a part of your family and i'm not gonna cry in this video 
when you have a pet they're a part of your family and it's really hard to to let them go because they're your babies you know she was my princess it was my little angel i was so excited i'd come home and she'd be super excited to see me she'd run and jump up and down and she loved being outside she would sunbathe she would sit out in my terrace and sit on the chair and just like collect all the sun like a little human she was super sweet super sweet super cuddly cute little white dog she looked like a little poodle in a way but it was funny because then at three in the morning i woke up to go to the bathroom i got so emotional had a hard time falling back asleep i was crying and i start i just sat there and i was like i don't know who i'm talking to right now because i don't know if there's specifically a god that i can talk to who's listening to me but universe creator whoever even my grandmother i was like please please give me some sign i'm desperate give me a sign that she is with my grandmother i said it in the bathroom on the floor while i was crying i was like my grandmother i call her ita ita please give me a sign she's with you my grandmother is a huge animal lover she actually has a dog and her dog is still alive but he's very old he's he's actually uh was they told my uncle that he should put the dog down because my grandmother's dog is like in really bad shape but it's too much for my uncle to do because he already lost his mom so he he rather his dog die at home and i thought about taking charlotte home and letting her pass away here but i didn't want her to feel pain because she her uterus the lining was really infected and it could rupture and that could cause pain i didn't want her to go through pain um but that night after i had like spoke that little prayer to whoever i was talking to i went in my bed and literally five minutes later my oldest daughter walks in my room she's 15 and she's like there is she's like did you did you light an incense and i was just like it's three in the morning why would i light an incense i love incense i'm like why would i light an incense she's like because i smell like something it smells like flowery it smells sweet it smells like roses when my grandmother passed away, my mom and my aunt both smelled roses. They both smelled flowers. And they say that flowers, when you smell it, like if you read about it, it's a sign of like um, a person who passed away, either a sign that they're going to pass away or that they're here visiting you. And my grandmother loved flowers and she always had a certain kind of like rosy perfume. So I'm like, what? So I get up and go in their room and I'm like, I don't, I really don't smell anything. And my daughter's like, how do you not smell it? It's right here next to my bed. Then my younger daughter is like, I smell it too. So I was like, all right, I don't smell nothing. I walk around the room, don't smell nothing. So I'm, I go back in my room. I'm like, if you keep smelling it, let me know. I try to go back to sleep. My youngest daughter comes in right before I drift back off to sleep. And she's like, we smell it again. Come see if you smell it. So my oldest daughter is laying down. She's like, okay, right here to the left of my bed, I smell something and it smells like Ita. It smells like her house. It smells like her clothes. It's like that, like a flower scent. And she's like, I can't explain it, but it smells very nice and, and inviting. And I think she's in our room. So that entire night, my daughter had a hard time falling back asleep. She was like, she said it wasn't anything creepy or anything like that but she just felt like there was someone in there because she had a hard time falling asleep because the smell was so strong and she really thinks it's my grandmother so i told my mom about it my mom was like that was definitely your grandmother because i smelled the same thing in my house a lot after she passed away and both my aunts did too and so um i believe that that was my grandmother coming to let us know she has my dog charlotte and she's taking care of her and i ended up having a dream that night and last night that my grandmother had her and she was super excited and super happy and charlotte was like running through like a whole field of flowers because charlotte used to love running i would take her to the dog park and she would just run through the grass and she's so freaking happy such a freaking happy dog and that's why it was so hard for me to let her go because i was like if i let her go she's not gonna get to enjoy these things she's not gonna get to sunbathe all these things and i was just like wait what am i talking about like i realized like i believe that in that afterlife there is more and i do believe that that there is like something else outside of this you know what i'm saying and something is not we can't comprehend it and so i believe that my charlie is out there um right now we're just taking care of my other dog juicy he seems like he's been a little low so i'm gonna actually buy him a bunch of new toys and entertain him i think he misses his sister 
uh, it's too soon to even think about getting another dog. And no matter what, whether I do or not, it'll never be a replacement because no dog will ever replace her. I, that was my baby. You know what I'm saying? That was my baby. No dog will ever replace her. I dealt with so much guilt. I'm still dealing with it. I'm trying not to. Guilt of if I could have done something sooner. Maybe if I knew sooner, I like I should have this. I should have that. And um, but my family is like, don't don't say that don't say that you know don't think like that because you adopted a sick dog because they were gonna put her down like i got her from the kill shelter and they were gonna put her down because a family was gonna adopt her and change their minds and i said i want her and as soon as she see me she jumped on me it was like automatic she belonged with me and they were like are you sure because she you know she has a little bit like her heart they didn't tell me specifically what it was but it was like she might have some heart issues i was like i don't care I would rather her spend a couple years with me than to spend uh, nothing just because she's here. Like spend no more years just because she's here and you guys are going to put a good dog down. She was and still is a very amazing dog and I don't at all regret getting her. And I highly suggest that if you are thinking about getting a, a pet like a dog or a cat, I highly suggest that you adopt because there are so many beautiful dogs, big and small out there that are in need of a family and if it's a sick dog you know i understand it's very expensive to take care of dogs but really think about the quality of life that you can give them even if they can't live to 15 years or 20 years i don't regret it i would adopt her over and over and over again and if i ever do get another dog a companion for my other sweet pup that i have now i it it won't be a replacement it will be a girl i do love having a princess but she will never be a replacement she'll just be another sweet baby you know that we add to the family but for now uh i don't think we'll be doing that i'm a huge dog lover i'm pretty much believe i'm gonna have dogs for the rest of my life because they're wonderful companions to have i think my grandmother needed her because i think my grandmother missed her dog and i think she might have needed charlotte and i know she would have loved charlotte she never got to meet charlotte she would have definitely loved charlotte if she did meet her before she passed and i'm sure she loves her right now my grandmother she was so attached to her dog and her dog became very depressed and sad and became even more sick when as my grandmother got more sick because she had alzheimer's and she couldn't remember a lot so um soon her dog will meet them and um that's is gonna be like a nice little happy ending so even though i'm extremely sad i'm extremely heartbroken i was feeling very depressed i woke up this morning i listened to les brown i don't know if you guys ever heard of les brown but i highly suggest that you look into him he's a motivational speaker and he's amazing and he brought my mood up so much, so much. I'm so glad I listened to him because I love listening to motivationals. But when I feel depressed and down, I don't eat, I don't go out, I don't talk to people. I pretty much isolate myself and I don't want to do anything. Like I had people texting me. I just was in bed pretty much all day yesterday. I barely ate. I ate like a couple of bites of a burger I made and that was it. I took a day off yesterday. I could not function. I was like, there's no way I can go to work. Like, I'm gonna cry all day. But I got some good support. You know, I have some like coworkers who, and some friends who um, on social media who are pet lovers. And it's always nice to have that support. It's not like you're asking for pity or just, or for sympathy. It's just, it's nice. We're human. Like we're supposed to be there for one another, you know? And, and if, if you've lost a pet, you understand how it is. You know what I'm saying? You understand, you understand how it's like, this is your baby, they're like your little children. And I'm not trying to compare a losing a child to losing a pet because it is all different, you know, but definitely, uh, definitely amazing thing to have a pet. Like my dogs have been there for me for so much. I'm not emotional, when I'm feeling any kind of way, they're always there. All the love I have for my sweet little Charlie Angel, I am giving it to Juicy. And I'm going to continue to love my Juicy as I've always. We've had him for longer. We've had Juicy since he was six months and he is now 11. Uh, so I'm very grateful. Very grateful. <sighs> okay. <laughs>
Um, I'm glad I got through this video without getting emotional. I cried so much yesterday. Today I told I cry a little bit today too. I don't believe in holding back your tears if you really, really, really have to cry. But I don't want to always come on here and seem so depressing. But um, I really appreciate you guys for watching uh, this video. That was pretty much all I really wanted to share. In my next videos, I am going to be speaking more about spiritual experiences that I have had that you guys don't know about because I've never ever spoken about it. I appreciate you guys so much. I love you guys all so much. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, which is right there, here, below, I don't know, somewhere over here. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I do post videos um, pretty much weekly on my Instagram, like little video clips and stuff like that. My reels, which I actually really like doing those because they're quick and easy. I don't have to set anything up. I could just boop, make a video, put it out, whatever. No editing, nothing. But make sure you follow me on there. Love you guys all so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.